Hi, my name is Jackie Lee Price and welcome to Shadowboxing. So how's everybody? How's the family doing? Yeah, good, good. Um, obviously, um, I'm with my brother, my nieces, so yeah, they're keeping me entertained and keeping me going. I can imagine, actually. How old are they? <laughs> One's coming now, um, 11. <laughs> <laughs> Making themselves busy. <laughs> yeah. When I'm doing a workout, they're just coming interrupting me, but I wouldn't have it any other way, really. Yeah. Actually, it's probably quite nice to have that um, that group of people around you because I was just wondering what it must be like for you. You're normally in camp, and then all of a sudden, it's like there's no. Yeah, how, how have you um, you know that, how have you got around that? That's the only thing that I've struggled with because I have no routine, and uh, it's just messed up my sleep massively. Like I'm going to sleep real late, um, mm. but I'm still like sticking to the training and. Um, just doing what I can um, but yeah it's just the routine and like being in camp three sessions a day it's mm -hmm. gone yeah. down to like one or two <laughs> so yeah. it's uh, a massive change really but we're so all in the same boat really aren't we so yeah yeah but at least with a professional fighter usually they've got like a, a 12 week camp whereas you guys as amateurs are in, in it you know 110% you know up in Sheffield, aren't you, four days, and then, you know, obviously home the rest of the time, so. Yeah, so it's it's a, a full-time job, like, I'm in yeah. Sheffield Monday to Thursday, yeah. and then I'm at, when I'm at home, I'm training Friday, but mm. the last couple of weeks coming up to, like, um, the qualifiers, I was in Monday to Friday, so I was literally there all week, mm. and then I have I have the weekend at home, and then it's still mm. then, because I'm, if I'm training hard for a tournament, like, I just want to chill when I get home, so it's even hard to go and see all the family, which I like doing, but some of them understand and some of them don't. I like the way you said some of them, but not naming any names. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got to be selfish, haven't you, as a full-time athlete? Like you say, it's your job. Yeah, my, you know what my dad always said to me years ago? He said, you've got to look after number one, which is yourself. Mm. And, mm. like, I'm not a selfish person, so... It was, it's hard for me sometimes, but in this sport, you have to be selfish, otherwise you ain't going to get to the top. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like you say, most people will who have your back will understand what you're doing, even if they're not kind of striving for something massive like you. They'll yeah. wish you well and they'll have your back. And then you're always going to get the people that are like, why can't you do this? And that's more about them, to be honest with you, Sandy. So, yeah. I'm also you know, find that you find that with like friends mainly. You, you, there's some that understand it, some that don't. So, I mean, to be fair, it's it, it's probably because you know you box as well. It's mm. still seen as being a male sport, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, your your mate just maybe just not interested in it. Like some of my mates just aren't interested in yeah. boxing. This is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you've never done the sport or you've never been involved, you don't know. You don't know what pe what the boxers actually go through. You don't know. How they live. It's not just yeah. a nine to five job. It's twenty four seven. So, oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about you being a, a former silver world medalist, a Commonwealth yeah. uh, champion. Um, you're still with GB. Are you coming up to your ninth year? Are you in your ninth year now with them? Yeah, coming up to my ninth year. Wow. I've done some time. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no. Obviously, it's, it's like I've built up all of this experience and, you know, like traveling the world, like traveling different countries. I know we don't get to see much of it like people think we do, but we don't. But mm -hmm. like just seeing all different cultures and how they live in, like kind of me, it's it's like built me into the woman I am now. And mm -hmm. like, um, I'm not just that little kid that used to run up and down Harvey Road and, uh, in Elveston, but I'm more mature more professional and yeah but that's what gb and everyone that's what's made me really being on yeah. gb team you have to be professional and yeah, it's good but even as a i mean you're not a kid at 18 but it's still for most people to take themselves away from their family monday to, to thursday and yeah. just grinding <laughs> i don't know if, <laughs> if people don't know what three sessions a day feels like <laughs> 
It's a yeah. real grind, isn't it? As they say, as everyone says on camp, it's graft, put a graft in, graft yeah. every week. <laughs> but honestly, it's it's that sometimes it's nice to, in a way, like this is kind of giving us a bit of a downtime and then kind of like refocus. And then when we get back into camp, we know it's going to be like graft again, three sessions a day. So um, I speak to some of the girls and we're just kind of like chilling a bit, ticking over, but it's nice. Your body's probably like, what is going on? All of this rest. <laughs> yeah, it's never had it in eight years, this long. I mean, like I say, you've gone in there at 18. You're now, what, 26 years of age? 26, yeah. I said that like you were really old. But um, <laughs> that's, like I say, it's a very, very long time to be involved in the sport. Um, but your family, especially your brother, Darren, he must be really, really... Um, uh, Dave. With you. Sorry, Dave. When yes. I said it, I thought. When I said it, I thought his name ain't that. <laughs> yeah. Dave. Dave, yeah. yeah, your brother must be uh, proud of you, surely. Yeah, he is. Like uh, we fell out and stuff in the past, like brothers and sisters do. But he's always got my back, and he's always said that. And um, yeah, I love him to bits. I saw your little challenge though, um, and I have to say, you beat him. Yeah, I. He still thinks he won, but there's so many people that said I've, I've. I've won, so I'm just taking it. It's the shame you <laughs> think you can't take it. The shame. It is. It is. He hates it. <laughs> How was he though when you first said, "Listen, I want to, uh, I want to get involved in boxing," because your football um, was your thing, and then all of a sudden you want to get in on your brother's thing. How was it? I've got two brothers, yeah. so I'm just imagining what it was like for you. Um. Well, as after I watched his first professional fight. And I was like, yeah, I want to I wanna give this a go. I went to the gym and, yeah, I just fell in love with it. Mm. And, um, yeah, he's always been desperate. supportive. Um, he tries telling me certain ways, but I know that some of them certain ways didn't work for him. So I kind of learned from when, <laughs> some of the stuff that he's done wrong and I'll make sure I don't make them mistakes. <laughs> yeah, wise, wise, very, very wise. And then I, I understand you've gone out in your first fight um, can you remember where it was and who it was against? Which club? Can you remember? Yeah, my first ever fight. Yeah. Yeah, um, at the Heritage Hotel in Derby. Oh, okay. With, um, One Nation, One Nation Boxing Club. No, not your was... club. Who did you box? Oh, I don't know who I boxed. Can't remember. Mm. No, I, can't, I, I could. I could even tell you some of the girls that I boxed last year. <laughs> my memory is bad. <laughs> That is bad, fun stroke. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, did you, because did, I read somewhere that you'd come out and you gave it the old uh, pro style entrance. <laughs> yeah, you know, because like, I was watching my brother for years. I yeah. watching him for years and you know how they come out to music and it's yeah. like, it was an amateur club show. So yeah. I come out to music and I thought, this is how you meant to do it. I got in the ring, I was dancing about. Referee was like, calm down, calm down. Ooh, and then after the fight, after the fight, um, my coaches was like, you can't do that, Sandy, in um, the amateur game. Um, you just got to be calm. You just got to go and get the job done. So, yeah, that was another experience. <laughs> yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, you being on the, on, the, uh, on the GB team now, I'm just interested. You've, you've missed out on the uh, 2016 games. Um, and then we come up to the 2020 games and you don't make the po well, you are on the podium squad, but you don't make the squad. Talk to me first about missing out the first time in 2016 after you've put all that work in, all that effort in. I mean, I've been following your career for a while and you, you know, were somebody or are somebody that everyone in the amateur game really looks up to you. Mm. Talk to me about that 2016, what was going on? Yeah, so it was um, what was it? Me and my um, Chantal Cameron. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we were both at trying to get the spot, and um, I just remember I got nothing against her. Like we we were teammates, weren't we? So I just remember um, they said they were sending Chantal to the first qualifiers, and I would probably get a second chance in the second qualifiers. And it come to that, and uh, I didn't get my opportunity. Mm. Um. So yeah, I was really down then, and um, mm. but 
we both wanted the same thing, so I had nothing against her. It's just sometimes you think it's you should get your fair shot, but it doesn't always work out that way. So mm. I kind of refocused and I thought, you know what? I I want them Olympics, like it's a dream. Um I'm gonna hold it out for another four years. I wanna mm. come to it um and then uh, last year uh, it was quite a bad year for me really in my career and um health issues and injuries and um went to the last two tournaments the Europeans and the world at the end of the end of the year um I went to but nobody knew the situation that I was in I didn't even tell social media that uh the prep was wasn't good Mm. but I didn't I don't say anything because I don't want to think I'm making excuses so I've come into this year and just trying to like refocus again and get back on it um obviously I had shoulder injuries so they were still taking time to heal mm-hmm. um and then so the, and they sent Rosie to the first qualifiers mm-hmm. um and I just thought you know what I stuck stick at it because if it doesn't go right for her mm-hmm. um my injuries will be 100% for the second qualifiers mm-hmm. and uh, I know I'm going to get the nod and mm-hmm. um yeah, she went and she didn't perform. Um, so I, I believe I'm in um, the driving seat now. We're going to the world qualifiers, but they were meant to be in May, and yeah. obviously they've been postponed. I don't, I don't know, know whether they're going to be at the end of this year or the start of next year. But yeah, a year till the Olympics. So uh, I just got to stay tunnel vision, and I've always come t- over injuries and throughout my career so it's like it's nothing new but so close to the Olympics it's kind of hard mm-hmm. you've got to be even more mentally strong to um, get through it. I mean that's what the other thing I was going to ask you how do you handle that it's like okay one one injury you're kind of like okay I, I, whatever time I'm out I'll just suffer it I'll get back on it down the line two months down the line and then another injury drops in and then a, I mean how do you kind of mentally handle that as well just not being at the gym doing um, the rehab not getting involved what right now just in just, general just uh, when, when, when i've had injuries and stuff yeah 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 i went like last year and then when um when i had an mri scan on my shoulders and they said you have two options like surgery or rehab every day mm-hmm. if i had surgery it would put me out the olympics which is happening mm-hmm. now so for me to be on, to, for me to put be on the GB squad for eight years, putting my whole my mm-hmm. my life dedicated to it, to be told you could possibly need surgery five months before the Olympic Games, it broke me. I nearly I nearly quit. Like there's only a few people I spoke to about it, and it's just like it is hard. Like you've got to be so mentally strong. But I've come mm-hmm. through so I kind of come through so much. Like <laughs> so I feel like I'm so mentally ready for. Any challenges ahead? I mean, you've definitely got the heart to to move forward and get through those Olympics because you've really put a, you know one hundred and fifty percent into the sport, haven't you? Yeah, I don't want to just come this far and then turn professional now. And yeah. so a lot of people have been telling me saying that, and I just I don't want to do that. I've been it. Oh, I've come this far to only come this far. I haven't. Yeah. So I, I got one more year and going to the Olympics and my a dream and could set me up on a big platform so yeah, that's what I want. Definitely. I yeah. mean I could understand why maybe last year if you'd said like I want to go pro. I think also to be honest with you I think a lot of people thought you were, might be thinking of going pro because you started working with Angel didn't you? Yeah um, so even before that I got offered to turn pro and I turned it down but yeah people thought I was um, gonna turn pro because I was working with Angel and um, it wasn't actually the case and we obviously I don't work with him now but it's not through by terms and um, we still get on we still speak um, I like the way he trains I like him he's a great trainer I liked everything about it the structure everything that's what I liked about him but um, what was working for me at the time it, me I'm a, I'm a GB um, that's what I needed to do and I needed to be there for like do what I'm doing there do that and not traveling at weekends to London and back home 
it's just taking it out of me. So, I mean, um, it's a it's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. The travel. On yeah. Top. It, oh yeah, it is a lot. Um. So yeah, I just went back to what um I was doing, like um training. If I was in Derby, at training um at, um One Nation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With uh, Clifton, and then I train with um. Where Monday mornings before I go to camp, I train with Kurt Gibbons. So I kind of just got went back to what I what I was doing before, and then um, it was working. So I'm just going to do that up until the Olympics. And there was some criticism though about you know talking about your work with Angel. There was some criticism about you working with Angel because he was a pro coach and you're involved in the amateur game. You know, how would you respond to that? Politely. Uh, <laughs> um, at, the, at the time, I was in it, so I was a bit frustrated, like, people not like, having their input, but um, mm. I see where they're coming from because to change to change something, like, so close to your end amateur career, um, mm. it's not exactly a wise thing to do. I wouldn't say it was a bad thing that I'd done mm. that, um, but... Um, because I've learned stuff, like, Angel's taught me a lot. So, um, yeah, everyone, everyone's got their opinion, haven't they? So. It's true, actually. I mean, he speaks very highly of you, and he loves working with you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, would you pick up that relationship after, you know, you go to the Olympics, you get where you need to be, and then say you um, you launched your pro career, would you, go, would you move to London? Or even Loughborough, because he's moving to Loughborough, isn't he? His camp, his little camp is moving to Loughborough. Oh, yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard he's going to Loughborough University. Um, who knows what will happen, but, um, yeah, I just, I feel like what I was doing beforehand, I'm just going to keep keep doing what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to say to yeah. him, I just some people pipe up, giving their opinions again. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, don't they say play your cards close to your chest? Yeah. So that you don't. So they say she said X, Y, and Z, and now, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. And um, so you live in the house, don't you? With uh, is it? Uh, you live with Lauren Price. Lauren Price. Demi yeah. J. Who else? Car- uh, Caris. 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 Yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> they keep a, they, We all keep each other going, you know, through camp. Yeah. It's a right laugh in camp, and um, yeah, we. With, we're like friends outside of camp now, so it's nice. I bet you're really missing them, aren't you? Yeah, well, we're staying in contact. Like oh, most good. days, most days, so it's, it's all right. So let's play uh, quick fire questions. Oh. I'll ask you a question. You're mm-hmm. not allowed to really think about it. You just say the first thing that comes into your head with regard mm-hmm. to the girls that you live with. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're watching that, actually. You, what, you've got to say the first thing that comes into your head. Sandy. Yeah, go on, then. Go on. Okay. Yeah, go on. Who's the messiest? Demi. <laughs> uh, who has the most heart? Oh. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Carrie, sometimes. Is that your final answer? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the funniest? Um, Karis. Lauren's Who? quite funny though, to be fair. Say that again. Lauren's funny when she dances. I was going to say, who thinks they're the funniest? Uh, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the earliest riser? Me. Oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Who is the person that is most likely, when there's a camera around, to take <laughs> to get in front of it? Demi Jade. Demi Jade. <laughs> Demi with an E. Demi <laughs> Demi with an E. <laughs> if you had to be any of them, who would you pick? If I had to be any of them? Yeah, I who? can't say that. Because their head would be, they wouldn't be able to get through the door. <laughs> Just between me and you. I can't say. Tell no me comment. How. Okay. <laughs> and lastly, who is the kindest? 
the kindest. Demi can be quite kind. She's quite, yeah, Demi. Oh. The little, our little Dem Dem. Yeah, she is tiny, isn't she, compared to you? Yeah, she's small. She's small. Yeah. She's... I see that yeah. picture the other week, and I was like, she, I didn't realise she was that small. Yeah, she's like boxed at 48 kilos. Teeny. Yeah, I think trying to build her up to 51 kilos. Well, she doesn't yeah. like it. Yeah. She likes to be skinny. Yeah, I can't, I mean, she looks naturally like that, though. I wonder how easy that will be. I reckon it'll be easy for her. She just needs to start lifting a few weights. <laughs> she eats a lot, actually, to be fair. <laughs> the same, she's 40, 48. Carrots eat the most, though. So one of them, they're annoying dudes that can eat anything that they want and still be... No, that's slim. Lauren. Oh, is it? She's at 75 kilo and she weighs about 70, 71. She can eat whatever she wants, but she just eats. She doesn't even eat that much. It's annoying. That is annoying. Me and Carrots are always like, what the hell? I know, that is annoying. May, may, when she gets older, though, it might pile on. I don't think it will, you know. I think she, she likes her tea and biscuits and that, and she still just doesn't put any weight on at all. Well, she doesn't overeat, so I think that's that's where um, it goes wrong for me. Uh, Everything in moderation. Mm. So thinking about, um, you know, you, you obviously got your mind on this goal. Um, you've got one more year left. I mean, wow, you know, uh, that'll be your 10th year. But in terms of other stuff, that obviously you, you're doing your little bits of training, your little ticking over. What else have you been doing to keep yourself sane? Um, doing TikToks with my nieces. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen any of them. And I posted a few on Instagram, but then I, I thought I better stop. It's just getting out of hand now. It's just posted too many. Okay. I've never done one yet, actually, to be fair. Once you do one, you start getting hot. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's the Not problem. Yeah. So what about, you know, um, in terms of like, you learning a new skill or anything like that, or you just literally just chilling out with the family, a bit of TikTok and a bit of training? A bit of training and TikTok. A bit of training and a bit of TikTok, yeah. I was going to start to learn learn a new language, but my, yeah. my brain just <laughs> my brain just works too much. And then I forget that, things. I'm, I'm, I'm the very forgetful. It's not good at this early age in my stage of my career. I was going to say. Things. <laughs> what has this period taught you um, about yourself that you didn't already know, Sandy? Um, I don't know about myself, but I just feel like it, it's taught me. It's just kind of been nice to um, uh, spend more time like my nieces and like you know them little things like that and yeah just not really taught me a lot I just I think I just overdrive overthinking anyway so mm -hmm. but it has I mean, uh, spending more time with my nieces it's just been nice and because obviously always going away and stuff so never really get much time mm. um obviously i've got i've got nephews as well so i, w I can't really see them which i i won't i go and sit in their front garden sometimes and oh, speak to them and that what, could, like, them? yeah they come to the front door and sit in there sit in the front garden that's sweet yeah that's really sweet have you not not regrets but had this time made you really see how much time, effort, and um, discipline and sacrifice that boxing has over your life? Yeah, actually, that, that was a good one. Um, it kind of when you're just at home, not don't have in, you're not on a proper routine. It kind of makes you realise like how like disciplined you actually are. When you when you when you do get back to training and how much time and effort you actually do put into boxing, and it makes you realise that um that just how much boxing actually means to it means to me. So 
that's why another conversation when turning pro now, like I just wouldn't, like I, I, I had a massive think about it. I was like, you know, I've done too much time to yeah. let it slip in the last, in the last minute. Yeah, one, one, one year, less than a year. I mean, well, mm. just over a year. But yeah, yeah, that'd be crazy right now, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. But we would look forward to also having you in the old pro game. I mean, that must excite you as well, just seeing all of the girls that have turned over. Yeah, I am. I am excited. Um, I feel, and I feel like it, a lot of people say it as well, that um, my styles are kind of it'll suit the pros so mm. I'm I'm really looking forward to it to be fair mm. uh, I really am Are you surprised by how far some uh, of the ladies have got um, when they haven't had the same sort of background as you or the same sort of grounding as you in the amateur game? Um, I'm not surprised but um, like because some of them they're just they're working hard to get to where they mm. want to be but, um, and yeah, everyone's got their own career and stuff, so, mm. but that's another thing. I don't want to turn pro and say I never reached my goal in the amateurs. Like, I want to I want to turn pro with a, a platform and a background behind me. I mean, you look at Katie Taylor and you look at Carissa Shields and you see how differently their career has gone. Because yeah. they've been a, a, a Olympians. I mean, yeah. just to even be called an Olympian, yeah. like he's just like, wow. There's so yeah. much, so much more things can come out of it, and especially for a woman, like it's mm. to turn professional with nothing behind you. It's, it will be twice as hard, mm. and like for, if I go with a, an Olympic background, it's yeah. just going to open more doors. And obviously, for a woman one fight you don't get paid as much as the men in the in, mm. for a fight so if I can it's me it's business isn't it pros yeah. um so if I can go with a an Olympic medal um mm. and set my set myself up um I think I, I'll do all right I mean uh, one of the things you could get is those more sponsorship as well obviously that's off what the I mean. back of, um, a, a medal but one thing uh, Joshua Boaxi said to me um when I interviewed him recently, he said, you know, he got on the plane and he went off to Rio and on the return, his life has never been the same again. That's what I mean. That's what they all say. So, um, it, yeah, it's just, it, sometimes it's hard to explain because if you're not in it, if you're not like in the team to go there, um, even just going, uh, I posted a video of me on the pads um, Last year, I was in Thailand on a training camp. Like, people see that and like, wow, she's going here, she's going there. And we don't really, we kind of take it for granted when we've, I've been on the team for this long. And I look back and I think, bloody hell, I've been here, I've been there, trained there, met these different people, learn about that culture, it's like, see things, opens your eyes. Um, so, like, it, I am and I am, when I, when I, it's given me time now in this lockdown to sit sit down and think like I am in a very good position yeah. um, and f don't take it for granted like just grab it with both hands and just keep just keep striving just keep going Get so to literally them. it's within grasping reach isn't it the dream that's what I mean and sometimes you need need this to you need to sit back and 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 think where you are and mm. Because when you're in it, like when I'm in camp and stuff, we're just doing our thing. Um, it's just kind of normal. Mm. And if you speak to other GB boxes, they they'll say it's like it's just normal. Like oh, it's camp. But when you mm. it's give us this time now to sit back and think, I don't know, I'm representing my country. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing what I love. Yeah. Um, it's changing my life. I'm meeting mm. new people, it's making me into a better person. And it's building um, a life that I want to live like. And when I get older, I can tell yeah. my kids that I was a, I used to punch people in the face for a living. <laughs> <laughs> I just got an image of you still being a certain age of punching people in the face, to be honest. <laughs> no, I actually said that 
I can't remember when I first started. I thought I was I would be retired by like 28, having babies at 29, and yeah. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen mm. yet. Mm. Yeah. Did you ever imagine that you would have got this far? Not this far, but I, I always, when I was boxing, and um, I always said if I ain't, if I ain't any good or I can't get to a certain level, then I won't box. So I kind of like, I believe that I could do it. So, um, and now I'm here, it's kind of like, now I need to push on a bit more actually, because you can get to a certain stage and you can just be like, ride ride it. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't do that at top level. You've got to push on and you've got to find another, another level. I mean, you sound like an all or nothing type of person. I am, and sometimes it's probably it's probably not good in a way because I I like overnight uh, results, but um, you have got to learn that it takes time. Yeah, I mean you are an amazing role model for lots of young ladies that are, are boxing currently. Um, you know, they really really look up to you on the circuit. I know that from oh, you know you. Being, being the young England girls and so seeing them around on on you know at shows. Um, you've got one year just to keep pushing uh, forward. I, um, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. I look Appreciate forward that. to the medal. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Just, Thank you. Yeah, it's literally just you know countdown now, isn't it? I know it is. Got to enjoy enjoy the journey as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got otherwise it's. It can be a bit overwhelming, but if you enjoy it, then it makes it that much easier. Yeah. I'm sure there's loads of girls watching this thinking, you know what, I really want to be her someday. So thanks ever so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, enjoy the lockdown or enjoy like the, the, the family part of the lockdown. Yeah, I will. Um, yeah. And thanks you, stay safe. You. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowbox UK, we'd love to see you, so please go ahead and subscribe now.